And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the deeds are presented to Allah on Mondays and Thursdays and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and accepts except for two people that have such enmity with each other that they are not talking to each other. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنْظِرُوا هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَرِحَا Leave these two until they reconcile amongst themselves. Meaning Allah will not look to their deeds until they reconcile amongst themselves. SubhanAllah, we have just like Thursday to Friday, Sha'ban to Ramadan. And this is a month that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned people become heedless in regards to. And the greatest ibadah of this month is to prepare for Ramadan. You know, often you hear people talk about Ramadan like a training camp. Actually, Sha'ban is the training camp for Ramadan. But in the middle of Sha'ban, there is something very special that happens that the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is from the mercy of Allah. We know about the person who is not forgiven in Ramadan and how miserable that is because how could you miss Allah's mercy and forgiveness in the month of mercy, in the month of forgiveness? How could you not be forgiven in a month where the gates of paradise are flung open, the gates of hellfire are shut, and the shayateen, the devils are chained away? How could you miss out on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there? Because it's so easy it is so close to you in that month. But in the middle of Sha'ban, the Prophet ﷺ says that on the midnight, so we're talking about Sunday night, the 15th night of Sha'ban, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks out to his creation. خَلْقِهِ And Allah forgives all of his creation, illa except for two, mushrik aw mushahin. Someone that attributes a partner to him, someone that does not worship him uh, solely, someone that does not turn to him alone and seek his forgiveness alone, and someone who has hatred in their heart, spite towards their brother or towards their sister that consumes them. So I'm going to actually talk about these two because the actual relationship between shirk and shahna, what is the relationship between shirk and shahna? Now we know shirk largely involves your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? You want His forgiveness, you seek it from Him alone. You worship Him, you worship Him alone. You seek Him out alone. He is one subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shahna, which is hatred and spite, involves someone else, it involves the creation. So it's between you and someone else. And we know that when the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that Isa alayhi salam will return, that Jesus, peace be upon him, will be sent back, that Isa alayhi salam would eliminate these two things, al-shirk wa shahna. What is the shahna, the particular type of shahna that the Prophet sallallahu is talking about? The ulama mentioned that shahna usually is born out of hasad, it's born out of envy. And it is when that hatred, that envy and that hatred has overtaken a person so much that they can't see anything in terms of success and failure except in regards to that person. And so subhanAllah, you find that Imam al-Jawzi rahimahullah mentions three things. He said the first symptom of it, you hate to see the person do well, you love to see the person get hurt. The second thing that they mention, tatabba'u al-urat, that you seek out their flaws, that you want them so badly to fail that you go out and you're looking, 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 let me find where I can cause failure. And the third thing, it's either me or him. I know it sounds very dramatic, but some of us have this in our relationship with family members. SubhanAllah, our relationship with family members. If the Prophet is, is saying, your deeds are not presented to Allah for boycotting your brother, what about people boycotting their moms? Their moms. SubhanAllah, I can't even get it through my mind. But the hatred makes you irrational and unreasonable. And it dominates you. And it deprives you of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is Allah going to look at a person in Ramadan who mistreats their parents, mistreats their spouses, their siblings, their children?